In this series, Squishies compete to be the top chef, and you vote for three finalists to compete for the ultimate title. In a battle between the forces of baking and artistry, there can only be one top chef. Reigning all the way from the woodland communities of Australia, we have this mother-daughter duo, Coco and Baby Bubbles. They are prepared to bake for us this donut. Okay, so this donut is in pretty good condition. It looks mysteriously like it could resemble Cocoa and Bubbles eventually. The squish value is 10 out of 10, very soft. We are sanding it down and trimming off any seams that might cause an issue in the future. After everything's prepped, I'm giving a nice white base coat to this donut before we can start painting with my new wet palette. I actually had no idea what this was. I know almost nothing about art supplies, but someone left a comment and so nicely told me that if I got a wet palette, my paint might not get dried out like this piece of paint is. So I will let you guys know how this works. Thank you for the comment. As you can see, I decided to mix together all of my own paint colors since I now have a palette to store them in. <laughs> yes. After my custom paint colors were all ready to go, I used the purple on the donut part of the donut. The theme of this donut is of course themed after Coco and Bubbles, Coco being purple, Bubbles being blue, and together they're going to be creating their own unique dessert. So Coco and Bubbles also have a tan rope? No, jungle thing? What is it called? Branch? A branch. A tan branch. And I'm incorporating that tan color into the ears. These are supposed to be waffle cones. And then I'm adding chocolate chips. So I figured that the mint green had to represent some kind of food and mint chocolate chip ice cream is the obvious choice here. It looks like melted ice cream. The green sauce is a special recipe by Coco and Bubbles. I'll let them reveal it to you later. After that was done, I felt like the donut was missing something and I could not add more icing. So instead I added little white dots to make it look like powdered sugar. And this is what the final thing turned out looking like. Coco and Bubbles are off to the judges, wondering if what they did is enough to win the title of Top Chef. Coco, could you please tell us a little bit about your dish? Oh, oh interesting. Sure. The is presentation is nice. Donuts? Wow. Could you elaborate on what your special sauce is? Oh! Unconventional. Your thoughts, Mel. Harsh criticism from the judges, but will the fans agree? Raining all the way from the water, we have Seaford, our lovable sea turtle. Seaford is going to be preparing for us a unique dish that combines donuts with his favorite fish food. I've never heard of a fish and donut dessert, but maybe it will taste okay. Okay, so as you can see, I have this fish biscuit, I think it is, and I just took out the little hook that was in his mouth, sanded it down, as well as cut off any of the excess seams around the donuts. Some of these donuts were in pretty good condition and some of them were in horrible condition. Really depended. I'm using some tacky glue and gluing these donuts together in a stack, making sure to align the bitten parts of the donuts. I added some glue to the side of the donuts and then put that fish on it. The idea for this squishy is that it's going to be a stack of donuts in which a fish has taken a bite out of it. After that it all dried, I took some extra slick paint and filled in any of the cracks and holes and just made sure every part of the squishy was one and together. Ooh, why does this look so good to me? Okay, so I'm giving a white base coat to this. Obviously, I need to have a good clean slate before I start painting. Once that white base coat is down, I used a tan color for the donuts. On the bitten part of the donuts, I added a jelly to the inside. The jellies are yellow, green, and blue, and those are the same colors as Seaford. The idea being that this dessert will be modeled after Seaford's theme. I then took a light brown color and outlined the bite marks to the donut. Because the inside of donuts are usually a little bit of a lighter color, I did go back with a lighter tan. After that, I took a chocolate brown color and covered the top of the donut, as well as the two donuts that were stacked underneath. I decorated our lovely fish with the same colors that Seaford has on him, green, yellow, and blue. I had to put some extra puffy paint right there to cover up the eye, and then I created the same kind of face that Seaford has and added some sprinkles. 
And here is the final result. Here is the before and the after. Let's check in to see how Seaford is feeling. Seaford says he's just happy to be here. He's done his absolute best, and even if he doesn't win, he knows that at least he has a new thing to eat? Friend? I don't know what this is. Seaford, what was the inspiration behind this dessert? Seaford, we've got some fish judges. Could you please elaborate on that? Carnivorous. I'm not staying for this. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> good, good. Thank you, Seaford. Maurice, what are your thoughts? A tough crowd. We'll have to see how you do in the polls. Good luck, Seaford. Last but certainly not least, we have Chip. Raining all the way from the baking section of your local grocery store, Chip will be giving this Sunday a makeover. Okay, so starting off with this ice cream sundae, it really isn't in too bad a shape. It's kind of like a new squishy, honestly. I gave it a sand, I cut off any excess pieces. It has a very good squish value, I'd say 10 out of 10. Very soft. And I just gave it a white base coat to start off with. After I'd painted the white base coat, I realized it was missing something, so I decided to add a cherry on top as well as some berries to the outside of the sundae bowl. After all that white puffy paint had dried, I took a twist tie and removed the red part of it just so I could use the wire. I stabbed that into the top of the cherry, bent it, cut it to the right height, and covered it with puffy paint. I thought this added a cool touch. I've never seen anyone do that with squishies. I painted the bowl with a tan color, dipped my brush into some blue, and painted the ice cream blue. And I think you guys can see where this is going probably at this point. I painted the drips that were supposed to be chocolate drips and I made them cherry drips. This is getting suspicious. I also painted the strawberry and the cherry with different shades of red. I went back in and darkened up the cherry after the fact. And I also added like a chocolate sauce to the bottom of the cherry because I thought that looked cool and nice and drippy. I made the leaves on the strawberry green and then also filled in that white part and made it white ice cream because I didn't really know what that thing was. After all those parts were painted, I then moved to the berries. This is what the final thing ended up looking like. Here's the before and here is the after. Before Chip goes into the judge's room, he has decided to pay a visit to a long time friend, Sherry. Cherry is about to see her dessert for the very first time. Oh, those cursed cups you can never get up when you fall. Will this new confidence boost from Cherry be enough to carry Chip through the judge's doors? Oh, we made it. Okay. Chip, please tell us, where did you get the inspiration for your dessert? It's true. You can get the sweeter side of life when you're in love. Ooh, wow. Marge, can we get your thoughts on this dessert? Where, where'd the plate go? Wait, did you eat the food or the plate, Marge? Oh my god. A special thank you goes out to this week's judges who gave away their weekend and their appetites to bring to you this first episode of Squishy Top Chef Makeover. There will be a poll on the community tab, and you guys can vote who you think won this episode. Previously on Squishy Top Chef Makeover. Oh! Unconventional. A tough crowd. You voted, and Chip is moving on to the finals. But who will join him? The choice is up to you. In a battle between fabric paint and sugar, one Squishy will join Chip in the finals. Raining all the way from Snail City, Marge is a bit of a mess, but she takes tie-dye to a whole new level. From one cake roll to another, Marge has chosen, well, a, a cake roll for her makeover. Okay, the cake roll is in pretty good condition. Notice the swirl is similar to Marge's tie-dye swirl. There are three strawberries on top, and the squish value is like a four, maybe? Not great. Up first, I sanded the squishy so that the paint would adhere to it. Cut off any excess seams. Gave our squishy a nice white base coat. And now we're ready to paint. Let's open this up. Of course, the package is just a total struggle for me to open. Truly painful to watch. 
And here we have our newly emancipated neon slick paint. The paint matches my nails, and I felt like this was very important. But this isn't about my nails. I'm trying to run a competition here, sir. I've chosen this pink color for the sides of the cake roll as well as the strawberries. This color matches Marge's face and tail. I used this dark pink color on the cake roll swirl as well as around the strawberries on top of the cake roll because I wanted the spots to match Marge's spots on her face and tail. Bringing out Marge's tie-dye colors as well as a white piece of paper because I knew this was going to be a total mess. Up first, we have this dark purple color, and the basic idea behind this squishy is to recreate the slimy tie-dye mess that is Marge. Since this is a dessert, in this case, it will be a bunch of frosting. Too much frosting, one might even say. Too much frosting? Is that even possible? Yes. Yes, it is. I used my dotting tool to drag the paint downward and make it look like dripping tie-dye. I also added extra drips to the sides and cleaned up any mistakes that I made along the way. And as usual, Marge decided to make things a little weird. These are not her babies. They are actually candies in the shape of her face. I don't know why we would want to eat this, but this is what she came up with. Here's the before and the after. Let's check in with Marge to see how she's feeling. Marge? Marge. Mar- oh my- you scared me, Marge. Tell us about your dish. They're not alive, right? Barry, your thoughts? Barry, you are literally sitting in a sticky pool of marshmallows. Oh, monstrous! <gasps> Marge, good luck in the polls. Raining all the way from the astrology section on your newspaper, this Virgo narwhal is actually nameless. Just kidding, her name is Flo. Did, did you just name her right now? No. Her name is Flo, and she'll be giving this cupcake a makeover. This unicorn cupcake is actually in really good condition. First, I'm sanding it down. The ears were removed. <gasps> I wanted this cupcake to resemble Flo, and Flo is earless. Ah! It's okay, Shh. it's okay. I'm trimming off my excess seams and giving this a nice white base coat. A lot of paint. Our squishy is now prepped and I'm bringing out my wet palette, which actually has just a bunch of dried out paint in it. I actually had quite a lot of fun peeling the dried paint from all of these little paint pots. I squished all of the paint into a ball and mushed it around. 10 out of 10 would recommend. And now that most of our paint palette is clean, it's time to mix up some fresh paints. We're dipping into this nice light pink color and painting the whole cupcake bottom, I guess the, the wrapper. I took out my white puffy paint to smooth out the parts of the cupcake where the ears had been chopped off. I dipped into some light blue paint and used that color for the cupcake's frosting. After that had dried, I took out a darker pink color for the roses. This actually took quite a few layers of paint. We're talking at least five layers. That was annoying. Dipping into this chunky green, I really should have remixed this color, but I didn't feel like it. And yeah, that's why it's chunky. Gross. I also painted this narwhal horn green. And we're dipping into this old, crusty blue. Oh. This is just to give some shadows to the frosting on this cupcake. I used this dark green color to give some vines, I guess, and also give some shading to the leaves. What's a cupcake without some drips? I added some darker pink drips to the cupcake wrapper. And once that had dried, I added some vines around the whole bottom of the wrapper, as well as little yellow dots. Those are gonna be the center of flowers. The flowers are purple and blue, and they're actually the same color flowers that are wrapped around Flo's body. For some finishing touches, I added blue around the petals of this rose. I think this brought the colors together and really made the rose pop. I love it. I also added some highlights to the drippy things around the bottom of the wrapper and highlights to the frosting. Okay, I love the way the squishy came out. I think it might be my favorite squishy ever. Let's check in with Flo to see how she's feeling about the competition. How you feeling? Whoa, Flo! Flo, get off the plate. Tell us about your dish. That's Ooh, impressive. Wow. Detail. Amazing. Frank, your thoughts? 
a real treat indeed. Thank you so much, Flo. Good luck in the voting. Raining all the way from an ice cream shop near you. Maurice is sort of known for spilling things. Ah, uh, yes, a leaning tower of cupcakes. What could go wrong? Up first, we're taking out my fabric paint, and we will be gluing together these two cupcakes. These cupcakes are actually extra squishies I had from my homemade squishy makeover video. Rubber banding those together. The top squishy is so much more squishy than the bottom. This squishy has its base coat down, and I'm taking out my puffy paint to fill in the gaps between the two cupcakes and make sure everything looks cohesive. After that, I painted the top wrapper with a light blue color and the bottom wrapper with a yellow color that I later changed to brown. I did this because I really wanted the wrapper colors to match Maurice. Dipping into this tan color and painting the cake part of this cupcake, which was actually later covered up by a bunch of paint. Maury, Maurice, our puppy, has paint all over him, and his ice cream cone is also covered in dripping splotches of paint. I'm telling you, the pup gets paint everywhere. And I thought it would only be fair to get these large globs of paint all over his leaning cupcake tower. Here's the before and the after. Let's check in with Maurice to see how he's feeling before going into the judges. Maurice is feeling confident about his food, but he's unsure which way the judges will lean. <gasps> Elliot, your thoughts? Tough criticisms for Maurice, but the judges don't vote. You guys do. Be sure to head over to the community tab to vote for who you think should move on to the finals and compete for the title of Squishy Top Chef. A special thank you to this week's judges for going where no squishy would go, tasting the untastable, all while looking super cute. Previously on Squishy Top Chef Makeover. <gasps> Flo, get off the plate. Frank, your thoughts? You voted and Flo is also moving on to the finale. But who will join Chip and Flo? The choice is up to you. In a battle between memory foam and cuteness, three squishies will create food. Raining all the way from your local grocery store section, this macaroon animal has come to win. From one allergen to another, Skippy's gourmet meal will involve mainly one ingredient. I bet you can't guess what it is. Just kidding, you probably can. <laughs> Before these squishies can be painted, they have to be prepped. Taking out my scissor and cutting off any of the pieces of the squishy that are sticking out or are part of the keychain. I also cut the waffle in half so I could glue it onto the macaroon. Taking out my tacky glue, which is basically fabric glue, and I did not anticipate having an issue with this because I usually don't have an issue when gluing squishies together. However, rubber banding this together was just impossible, so I had to resort to my gross hot glue gun. Once the hot glue had dried, I used my puffy paint to fill in any cracks and seal everything together. Taking out a soft matte paint, uh, trying to open it, <laughs> Ooh, struggling. I got it. Creating a nice white base coat. And now we're ready to start adding some colors. Dipping into this peanut butter color or waffle color. More on this later, but this lack of difference in color between the two of them did cause some issues. Dipping into this brown color and adding that where the waffle cone meets the macaroon. And I did get some comments last video about the way I say macaroon. Oranges, oranges, potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. It's an accent difference. I chose to paint the peanut purple because we're being weird, guys. And then I took this darker purple because that is on the bottom of this very air-filled macaroon. I have yet to stab it with a needle to deflate the air out of it. Anyway, I'm adding this darker color to match the other macaroon. And as I was doing this, it started to look very faded to me. So I took out this darker purple color and added the jelly on top of this waffle cone. As I was doing this, I really contemplated, do I want this darker jelly in between the macaroon? I don't know, should I do it? Should I not do it? I did it. As soon as I did this, I almost immediately felt regret. I should have kept it the lighter purple. It looks like a sandwich filled with jellyfish jelly. 
But seriously, now it looks like hamburger buns. While I dried this off, I contemplated why this looked so bad, and it dawned on me. Why does this one look so good? We have a purple and then a different purple color. Darker purple color on bottom and a pinky purple color on top. If we compare that to the Krabby Patty, we have a tan color on bottom and then we have the exact same tan on top. I know what I need, a different color on the bottom. I can't change the top one. I would have changed the top, but I had already added the jelly. So instead I added powdered sugar to the bottom macaroon. Did this solve the problem? No. It was past my bedtime at this point, so I decided to just continue onward. I added some peanut butter to the top of the peanut and also more to the macaroon to try to create more color differentiation. I also added light purple around the jelly. I don't know if I like that decision, but it was a decision that was made. And then I also decided to add some eyes to this peanut. I personally thought the peanut was really cute before, so I wanted to keep the face. I also added some highlights to the jelly and the peanut butter to make everything look really, uh, shiny. Since this is supposed to be food, we might be questioning why I decided to make the peanut have a face. Shh. Don't question it, just go with it. Honestly, I just added the face because I thought it looked cute. I made the eyes a peanut butter color. I outlined them with a black color just on the edges. And I also added some glimmers and eyebrows. Although there are several things I would change about this squishy if I did it again, I do like the way that this came out. I think I like the peanut the best. Out of the kitchen and into the judge's room. Skippy, could you tell us a little bit about your dish? Coco, your thoughts? I think that's a compliment. Good luck in the polls, Skippy. Raining all the way from your campsite's fire pit, this s'more cat, Graham, is ready to bring us a donut? Yep, it's it's a donut. It's a keychain as well, and it's very squishy. 10 out of 10. The first step in this makeover process is removing the keychain. It was really stuck in there. Get out. I think I'm showing you that the squishy does have some like seams. Sanding this squishy down and then taking out my scissors to cut off any of those seams. Taking out my soft matte paint and there is some stuff stuck to it. And I'm using that to create a nice white base coat for our donut. A few coats later and we're ready to take out our colors. Dipping into this donut dough color, the same color that was the peanut butter color and the waffle cone color. We're really using this tan color a lot today. And I'm taking out this chocolate color, but first we're using white. I forgot to do that first. For this donut, you guessed it, we are going to be creating a s'more theme. But to change it up a little bit, I figured for this, ugh, that was a huge mistake. I digress. The marshmallow is supposed to look like it has been lit on fire a little bit. So this is the before and the after. I do like this one. I know it's a little bit more on the basic side, but I still like it. Now that Graham has finished his donut, he is moving on to the judge's room. Let's see what he comes up with. Graham, tell us a little bit about your dish. Oh. Poor presentation, but how does it taste? Mel, your thoughts? Okay, Graham. Well, good luck in the polls. Raining all the way from Cupid's bow, we have Val, our Valentine's Day hamster. She will be preparing for us an ice cream cone made with love. I'd give this like a seven out of 10 for squish value. We're sanding it down and then we're taking out our scissor to cut off any of the excess seams. I'm also giving it a white base coat. This foam is the kind that just sucks up paint. So I really had to do a lot of coats before it was ready for some colors. I don't know why I'm petting it. Dipping into this very pale pink color that matches actually Val's pink fur. She's a hamster, yes, it's fur. Dipping into this purple color for the cone, which matches Val's bow. You'll notice that Val has hearts with three different colors. I've prepared those colors here. 
I'm recreating the hearts that are on Val's body and putting them on the ice cream. The ice cream cone is starting to look like Val, but it is missing something. So we're adding some whipped cream to the top of this cone and letting that dry. I'm also using more of this dark purple color to add some drips around the waffle cone. Is it a waffle cone or is it a sugar cone? It's a sugar cone. Once I was done adding sprinkles to the top of this whipped cream, Val's ice cream cone was completed. Here they are side by side, and I honestly really love the theme on this ice cream cone, and I love it even more when it's next to Val. They look so cute together. Let's check in with Val to see how she's feeling before going into the judge's room. Val is feeling really excited. Tell us a bit about the inspiration behind your dish. Aw, that's cute, Val. But how does it taste? Maurice, your thoughts? Glowing reviews for ice cream, Val, but let's see how you do in the polls. And here are all three of the dishes for this week's episode. Don't forget to vote for the squishy you think should move on to compete for the ultimate title of Top Chef. You can vote in the community tab. A special thank you to our judges for, well, helping us to judge these dishes. Previously on Squishy Top Chef Makeover. I think that's a compliment. Oh. You voted, and Val is also moving on to the finale. But who will take home this season's ultimate title of Squishy Top Chef? In this finale episode, the choice is up to you. In a battle between the remaining contestants, only one can win the title of Top Chef. The finale's theme is a slice of home. Each squishy will have to incorporate their hometown into their piece. Reigning all the way from Cupid's bow, we have our Valentine's Day hamster, Valentina, or Val. From one matchmaker to another, Val has decided to recruit a friend from her hometown. This squishy is actually brand new. I bought it from Walmart for like $10. Squish value is like a four. It's kind of hard to press. There's also some things sticking out that I will need to sand away and clip off with scissors. The sanding removed the face. And I also clipped off a lot of these little seams that were sticking out peeled right off. We've got some wings. These are actually wings that I took from... Yep, these wings were originally Val's, but she is donating them to her friend. These look like they'll make a nice appendage. Because of the weird shape of these wings, I did use my hot glue gun to stick them on. Oh, I'm showing you how they fit together now. Look at them, best friends. Taking out my white slick paint, and I'm just filling in all of the gaps and holes, just trying to make sure that this wing is really permanently bonded to its back. I did add a layer of white slick paint to the whole front, just to make sure it would be smooth, before adding some white matte paint and giving it a nice white base coat. Once this squishy was completely white and totally colorless, it was time to add some color. I took out a purple color and painted the bear purple. I also painted the wings a light purple color, dipped into some light pink paint for the icing on the cupcake. This is actually the same pink that Val is. And then, ooh, I debated between these three colors for the cupcake wrapper and ultimately went with this slightly darker pink color. I'm pretty happy with the general colors for this. Let's get in some details. Up first, we're adding some drips around the cupcake in this dark purple color. I'm also adding some hearts to the icing in the same colors that Val has her hearts. After that, I decided to add some dark purple hearts to the bottom of the bear's hands because Val has that on her hands. She has hearts. Using my pencil to sketch out a face for this Valentine's Day bear, I filled in the eyes with white and then I also colored in the little nose and the mouth. Since this is hometowns, I thought they would look somewhat similar, so you'll notice there's a heart on the forehead of this bear, and Val also has a heart on her forehead. After adding the glimmers to the eyes, I felt like it was missing something, so I decided to add one last detail, some icing to the wings, and of course I made a mistake along the way dropped it while it was still wet and ruined the wing. <sighs> It was a little bit of a tragedy, but at the end, I was able to fix it, mostly. 
And here is what the final squishy turned out looking like. I'm really happy with this before and after. I love how cute it looks. And honestly, what does it for me is when you put them side by side, all three of Val's squishies, the theme is just so cute to me. I absolutely love it. But let's see how the judges feel. Val, tell us a little bit about your... Wait, where is your dish, Val? Whoa, Val certainly came to win, and the judges are looking up at this dish. Thematically on brand, but how does it taste? Skippy, your thoughts? Passing the taste test with flying colors? But will the votes agree? Good luck in the polls, Val. Raining all the way from the baking section, Chip has always gone by the motto, bake it until you make it. From one cookie dough mouse to another, in today's hometown episode, Chip has decided to share someone very near and dear to his heart. Okay, so here we have Chip's very tall, three-tiered cake. It kind of reminds me of a... well, I'll explain later. First, I'm taking out my white matte paint to cover up this cake and give it a nice white base coat. After that is done, it's time to dip into some tan cookie dough color and paint this second tier with the cookie color. After I had painted it, I realized it was a little bit too dark when compared to Chip, so I lightened it up. I personally preferred the first color, but I did want it to match Chip. I dipped into this dark blue color for the bottom tier to match the same blue color that Chip has on his cup. And I took this light blue color, which is actually the same light blue color that Cherry is painted. <laughs> to create some cherry sauce, I took out this red puffy paint and added some drippy sauce all around the bottom tier of the cake. I also took out some chocolate brown color to add some chocolate chips to the second tier of this cake. Here's what it looks like so far. Next, we're giving this little cat mouse some cookie ears, and I think you know where this is going at this point. The white slick paint was used to create some drippy vanilla ice cream on the cookie dough layer of this cake. Since this is the hometowns episode, this cake is actually Chip and Cherry's wedding cake. So there is a little bit of decoration from each of them. And on top, we have their child? I hear ya, I hear ya. Conceptually, it might be a little strange, but I saw this cake and I could not decorate it with anything other than Chip and Cherry's child. Look at the top. It perfectly looks like the combination between a cat and a mouse. And I was like, look at this. This could easily be Chip and Cherry's child. She has her mother's eyes and, well, distinctly her father's ears. I mean, those ears, definitely her father's. But the eyes, spitting image of her mother. I did actually adjust the eyes to be more like a cat's eyes where they have like the oval kind of shape in the center. I wanted the eyes to look more like Cherry's eyes and also look a little less crazy. After adding the glimmers, I felt like it was missing one thing. One last piece on the head. I think it needs a cherry on top. In episode one of Top Chef, Chip actually made a dessert for cherry that had a cherry on top, and I used a twist tie in that episode to create the cherry stem. So I thought, let's do that again. I also felt like the colors on this thing wasn't very balanced. I felt like it needed some red on top of the head to balance everything out much better. Their child looks so cute, and I don't know why the name Cindy keeps coming to mind in this before and after. When I look at her face, she just looks like a Cindy to me, which is a strange name choice. Before heading into the judging, Chip and Cherry decided to show you a nice family photo up. Ah! Chip, who from your hometown did you bring to present your dish? His daughter is on top of the cake eat around her. Chocolate and cherry do pair well together, but will the taste test agree? Graham's so happy he fell off his chair. Are you okay? Ollie, your thoughts? It appears Chip and Cherry are the perfect pair. Good luck in the polls, Chip. Before we move on to the next contestant, I just wanted to let you know I now have my Bella signature with the shooting star, as well as my Draw Your Journal logo available in my Teespring. They're in stickers in this case, as well as 
t-shirts, sweatshirts, phone cases, etc. The link is in my bio. Raining all the way from the garden? The water? Flow? We don't really know where you're from, but I guess that's the point of hometowns, isn't it? I'm taking out this brand new squishy that I just purchased from Walmart. It's a giant ice cream cone, and I actually purchased three of them for a very super secret special project I've been working on, and I'm saving this top for that. Part of this top secret project already appeared somewhere in the video. You can look for it if you want, but it won't come out for a few months. Trimming off the seams for this cone, I actually had a lot of seams to cut off on this. I sanded it down and took out these two extra squishies. This is a very small donut and the cutest little rabbit. I got these two squishies in a giant pack of squishies and I actually just never use them. I have a bunch of these small ones and I wanted to incorporate this into moment of silence for the bunny who's being cut in half. I put the bunny inside the donut to create a floaty because these things are going to be swimming. To my complete and utter surprise, the bottom half of this bunny looked exactly like a narwhal. I was shocked. I was like, look at this. How can I not include this from Flo's hometown? Flo is, of course, a narwhal, and narwhals swim in the water. So for this piece, we have two of Flo's neighbors swimming in a pool of melted ice cream. The narwhal was missing one thing, so I took out this ice cream torch and cut it to the right size and created a little horn for Flo's tiny neighbor. I don't know who this is, it's just a random narwhal in the sea. Once everything was sealed together, I put a nice white face coat over this whole thing. And now it's time for my favorite part, the colors. So I'm dipping into a light pink color that I freshly mixed together and painted the sugar cone on the bottom. I also painted the little narwhal friend, the light green color with the pink tail and pink horn, just like Flo. I painted the bunny a light purple color and gave the donut floaty a darker purple color. Dipping into this light blue color, which is actually the same light blue color of Flo's eyes, and it's also the same light blue that I painted the cupcake in episode two. To make the ice cream look like it had even more depth to it, I added some darker blue colors to the crevices. I also added some blue drips down the sides of the cone to really emphasize that it was melted ice cream. Taking out some green puffy paint to add vines to the bottom of the sugar cone, as well as vines around the body of Flo's tiny narwhal friend. After that, I added pink and purple flowers to the vines. These flowers are quite chunky, but that is how they are on Flo, so I decided to keep everything consistent. And now we're ready for my favorite part of any piece, the finishing touches, especially adding the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the glimmers in the eyes, any extra details that kind of bring the colors together. That is always my favorite part of any piece. I especially love the part where you add the pupils to the eyes and the glimmers. I also added winged eyeliner to this bunny and I actually really like it. I think it turned out super cute. The narwhal didn't get winged eyeliner, but he's still cute. And here is the before and after for Flo's piece. I have to say this piece was definitely more complex than I usually do. I added a lot of things onto it and I really am happy with the way it turned out. Flo is relaxing outside before heading into the judging room. Uh, Flo, you're on the wrong side of the screen. Could you go, yep, on the left. Tell us a little bit about, nope, that's in the center. Oh. Conceptually, it's the most interesting, but how does it taste? Seaford, your thoughts? From one sea creature to another, Seaford approves. But do the polls agree? Wait, wait, wait. Before we vote for the last time, I want to give a special thank you to each of our contestants who created all different food dishes this season. And now it's up to one last vote to decide who is this season's top chef. Don't forget to vote on the community tab for who you think should win this season of Top Chef. Previously on the season one finale of Squishy Top Chef Makeover, Val created a dish worth everyone's affection. 
Whoa, Val certainly came to win, and the judges are looking up at this dish. Chip and Cherry had a child. Before heading into the judging, Chip and Cherry decided to show you a nice family photo up. And Flo was, well, Flo. Flo, you're on the wrong side of the screen. Could you go, yep, on the left? Tell us a little bit about, nope, that's in the center. Oh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the votes are in. Flo did swimmingly. She came in third place. Val was certainly shown a lot of love in the votes. But at the end of the day, votes are what you need. And Chip came in first place and is crowned the season one top chef. Congratulations to Chip and Cherry and their new baby, Cindy. Season one's top chef has been selected, but who will be the top chef for season two? The choice is up to you.